So where we're at so far, um, apologies for the dog in the background. We were talking about how to get members involved in activities that genuinely interested them. Bill shared something that worked for him. And then when we opened it up, there weren't any other ideas right now. So I asked folks to introduce themselves and talk about struggles they've had, maybe what hasn't worked. So I thought we'd take it from that angle. So Alyssa's gone, maybe Chris, if you wanna go next, just talk, introduce yourself and then talk about maybe what struggles you're having. Sure, my name is Chris Simons, the Artesia Rotary Club. Um, I'm the VP right now and incoming president-elect next year for the third time. Uh, and I will say when you talk about your 40 men members being down, we would die to have 40 members in our club. Uh, but we're down to 10 members. Um, you know, if we get six at a meeting, that's pretty good. Uh, we're definitely at our do or die phase. Um, it's myself and Ben Harvey that are uh, really the core of the club. Um, and, we, you know, if, if we're not going to always be there, so we got to figure this out. So talking about the succession, getting members involved, as we always do, you know, the membership and we get a few more people, they move on, quit, whatever uh, the situation is, but we have to change. That is the um, thing that we know. And that's why I'm here today is to, you know, hopefully get good information. I already have I think these worksheets, some of these things, some of the ideas are going to be great. Uh, but I definitely know, and maybe Jen, you're in the same point because we're about the same size. Uh, you know, we're at the do or die phase. And, you know, I'm third generation in this club, uh, in my family, and I don't want it to die. But uh, we came in and all the older people were tired and done and they left, including my father, and won't have anything to do with it. And I've been playing this game since 2005. Uh, we've had the same conversation over and over and over again. Uh, but what I do know, we've got to do something different. So we're already looking at some of those things, and I'm hoping to incorporate some of these ideas here with what we're already talking about. But for us, it's it's do or die. That's where we're at. And do you think your the rest of your club is on board with that? Like, do you think you can have frank discussions with them about where you're at? We can, but Ben and I are the catalyst. We have no other member that's going to, they're, they're all either going to be in support or check writing mode. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote three things down because that hit the nail on the head. Um, I mean, Ben and I do everything from the finances to the tax return, you know, pay, paying the bills. I mean, you name it, we do it. If we weren't there, this our, we'll tell you right now, the Artesia Rotary Club would be gone. Um, and like I said, I'm already going into my third presidency. Ben's going into his second right now. Um, we can't keep doing that. And we got to keep members. We got to get some more of those uh, um, involved members. I think we have a good core group that will follow. They will help. They will do. Um, but it's it's going to take us, you know, taking the bull by the horns. And I'm already going to use some of these things that uh, in the background, I've been emailing them to Ben. <laughs> and uh, we already have a meeting scheduled. and We're going to do it. Uh, but I tell you right now, Ben and I are going to give it our go, give it our all. And uh, and it's do or die for us. And we've got a foreign exchange student this year. I know Bianca has been helping us and we're super excited about it. And I think that's going to be a good little catalyst for us too. Um, I know uh, Bella is going to be coming in. I'm picking her up, I think on the ninth, uh, Bianca. And uh, we're excited about that. And we're hoping that'll also bring in some uh, uh, excitement into the club because uh, enthusiasm is, is difficult um, in a club. And, you know, I'm going to work on structure, big time and structure and systems um, and getting people at least if they don't want to do, we're going to tell them what they need to do, you know, <laughs> hold them accountable. Um, that's the only way I can think to do it. And then we're going to start changing things up. We're going to change our meeting format. We're going to go to a tier due structure, whether they want their meals or not. We're going to move our meeting location to back to the, uh, uh, we started this right before COVID. We went into the hospital and they had the, uh, the, the rest, not the rest of the catheter meeting go through the buffet line and then COVID hit, shut everything down, but we're gonna move back to that and giving some people some options that if they do just wanna be a check writer and occasional attendee, um, they can feel like they can do that without losing out or uh, whatnot, or just participating in activities if they want to. Uh, but giving some more flexibility than what we've had as our traditional, you show up at lunch. You know, that's what I like. I like the fellowship. I like to joke around. 
have a good time with my members, um, but that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, so we've got to do something different. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about, you can tell it in my face right here. I'm super excited about uh, some of this stuff and giving us some tools and not having to reinvent the wheel. Um, going, going through that, I think somebody's put a lot of thought and time into some of those documents. So that's awesome. And I would say just your attitude about being willing to change things up and try a lot of different things, changing your venue, your tier. That's great. Keep that up. And I'll also say, I find across Rotary being involved with youth is really motivating for a lot of members. So that's great that you've got a foreign exchange student and think about Ryla and think about those other youth programs, maybe starting up an interact club locally so you can get your members engaged with interact, that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we've talked about all those things and be great. We tried some Ryla. Actually, my wife, who's just right here, is a graduate of Ryla. Oh, um, nice. And uh, she doesn't want to be on camera. No, no. <laughs> That's okay. Extremely introverted, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad but, you're here anyway. Yes, yeah. But, uh, you know, we the, it always comes down to um, we need more people to be able to do that because it can't be on Ben and I on everything. Um, Because we're both very busy. We run multiple businesses. I mean, even doing some things Bianca's had me need to do is a struggle (laughs) Uh, because I'm putting out fires left and right. But uh, I mean, just like after this, I'm at my cabin. I go to a board meeting as soon as we're done uh, with this. And uh, and I'm sure everybody struggles with that. But that's it it goes back to that membership cue. You can't have can't do these things without more membership. We can't get membership. if We don't do these things. So um, one thing, never be afraid to reach out to the district. Uh, there are people who will pour everything they have into your club and help you do whatever it is that you need to do. So don't ever um, be afraid to ask for help. And I think it's great you're being flexible with your meetings. You can go. Rotary has really scaled back the, the strictness of how the meeting needs to look. Um, maybe you cut back your meetings to twice a month. You only have to have two a month. Uh, maybe you do them in the evenings. I know a lot of clubs, they do, they meet at the the brewery and they have their meeting twice a month there in the evening and they have a great time. Um, do what you think is going to work the best for your club and don't worry about the, the strictness of Rotary. You get to, you get to make Rotary your own now. And that's something very powerful that we haven't had in the past that I think more clubs need to adapt to because you've got the option to be this really vibrant, unique thing in your community. And that all comes from you and your members. So don't be afraid to, to buck the trend and, and do something crazy. Uh, and don't, don't be afraid to ask for help because we're behind you 100%. We'll, we'll talk about asking for help. That's something we've never done. But the, the crazy, yeah. that's our middle name. We're good with that. <laughs> that's going to help. That's going to help you a lot. And, and don't be afraid to talk one-on-one. You've said you got like a core group that'll follow. You think that'll go along with your ideas. Talk to them one-on-one, see how you can get them maybe a little bit next level. Like their core group sounds like they're kind of following, but maybe they can help you lead more. The ones that really want to like focus on them, how you can, how you can do that. So, yeah. That's what this is about is figuring out how can we help individual clubs and individual members kind of reignite that passion for Rotary because it sounds like a lot of your core group may have fallen out of, out of that love with rotary that we have. And we have to find ways to reintroduce that to them because we all joined for a reason. And a lot of people forget that reason. Um, So we, we've got to work as clubs to really find that and, and put that back front and center and say, Hey, you're here for a reason. You decided to do this. Let's remember why. So who is next, Jen? I'm sorry, I missed. uh, We've done, um, yeah, so we've done Alyssa and and Chris, uh, maybe Audra, if you want to, if I can pick on you. And it's okay if you don't want to share anything. If you want to just introduce yourself and say, I'm here to listen, that's fine. We're not trying to pressure you, so. Maybe a little arm twisting. (laughs) Not too much, though, just the right amount. I'm Audra Dodson. I'm currently just a member of the Rio Rancho noon club um as everyone is experiencing our membership is uh, shrinking as well as aging so we're struggling to attract the 
younger folks to the meeting. Um, we also have the satellite, Rio Rancho Satellite Club, which does exactly as you mentioned. It meets just twice a month at a local brewery at 530. So those who can't make it to the noon club can attend the 530 meeting. And we're hoping that will maybe appeal more to the younger generation. Um, our membership in the noon club is older and very set in their ways. So it's exciting that Chris is actually pushing forward some of those innovative changes because I think that'll appeal more to, um, I don't know, the, the I hate to keep calling them the younger generation, but um, the dynamics in our society and in business is different and Rotary needs to change and adapt to that as well. Because we, we leave out a large portion of the potential Rotary community by having meetings at noon for an hour because, you know, you, you knock out educators, you knock out people who aren't business owners, but are still, you know, professionals, you, you leave out those huge swaths of people. So if you're a, adaptable and you have a satellite club that meets at a time where those people can join, that only grows your club. There's no downside to that. There's only upside. So being as flexible as you can be to really target, you know, underserved portions of your community and, and where Rotary could really shine, be creative, have fun with it. Yeah, we're trying to be creative, but convincing some of the older members that change is good <laughs> is uh, challenging. <laughs> I, I've got an ulcer for a bunch of members in my club who we fight that with on a daily. So I understand completely. And you're not, and that's where the beauty of the satellite club, I think is, is you don't have to stay in a rotary club because that's it. You, you can go and you can form the rotary club that you want. I guarantee you there are like-minded members in your club who are willing to take a step and say, Hey, let's try something different. Let's do something different. You don't have to stay if that's what they want. And that's what rotary means to them then we don't have to change that, but you can change and you can grow something new. And I bet you win over a, a, a few of those hard cases in the process. Yeah. And I would say just a comment about aging membership. I do find too, it, it can be a mindset also. Like we had in our last discussion, uh, one gentleman said he's going to go to a retirement community to recruit. And we've, you know, we've been talking a lot about younger members and such. He, so, so he said that might be an odd place to recruit, but they're people with time. And I think it's about the mindset, not so much the age, but do you have a dynamic mindset, no matter what the number is, how old you are? I mean, you could, you could be 20 and be an old codger in your mind. You know, it doesn't, I know some like that. <laughs> so it's not as much the age, it's your, it's your mindset and willingness to grow too. Our most vibrant club, our member in Alyssa and I's club is Harry and he's in his nineties and he is, he is our most vibrant member. So age, age is just a number, but he is our 100%. He is, he is the backbone of our club. Um, so don't, when you're recruiting, don't only focus on young people. Don't only focus on it the older generation focus like Jen said on the people who have that rotary mindset, who will be able to help you grow your club. Yep. Cause that's what we're here for. Yep. Look for the ones that want to serve. And I find in a lot of cases being involved in youth programs, a lot of people are motivated by that, whether it's reading to little kids at an elementary school, whether it's RILA foreign exchange students. Um, we just had in our central area council meeting, uh, George Greenlee talked about scouts and how scouts are all required to do service projects. So it's like a natural relationship. If you want to sponsor or charter a scout group, you can, or just reach out to a local one and say, hey, do you want to help us? And they've already got a service mindset. So yeah, they're younger. Maybe they can be a pipeline for us if they, they're like, oh, what's Rotary? And they learn about Rotary and maybe they join, interact, Rotaract, whatever. Um, but yeah, having youth involvement really motivates a lot of people and tends to attract members. So we've got about six minutes left. I just want to keep everybody on track. Yeah, sorry about that, Eric. No, no, so, no, I'm just reminding. Bianca, did you want to share anything? 
No, I'd rather hear from the newer members. So I'm, I'm Bianca, I'm from Roswell, past president. We have 70 members and we have between 35 and 40 at lunch every week. Um, last year, we had a phenomenal amount of participation from club members and I'm really proud of them for that. And, and uh, why? Why do you think why? that is? Why did they um, participate? Because before I became president, I was told over and over and over again, don't do everything yourself. So um, there was a, a thing that I that I found out about years ago, 50 things everybody should know in Rotary. And I incorporated that. And I was going to read one of those every week. And instead, I got to the meetings and I tapped on somebody's shoulder and I said, would you be my reader today? Would you be my reader today? And I had one person say no. Um, and a few months later, I asked him again and he said yes. But I, I actually kept track because I didn't want to ask the same people and I don't want to rely on my memory to say who did it and who didn't. So I actually kept track. So as it got to the end of the year, I was down to a really small list but it, it really got other people engaged at the weekly meetings. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a big one too, is I think some people tend to sit back unless they're asked. If you ask them something, give them a job, then they may get more engaged or you find out what they're interested in. Nope, I'm not doing that. Well, in fact, I mean, I, and I'm not afraid to do that. And I've learned that over the years, but Eric came as a guest one day and it's like, oh, dude, we need help with the technology. You're in charge. And I put him in charge. Nice. You know, it, you, you just have to ask, you know, if you stand at the front of the room and say, I need a volunteer too, it's silence. Yep. But if you tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, can we have a little chat? Or would you do this? you're more apt to get a yes. And so oh, that, okay. that's what I did. And, and we just, it was, it was good. What you're doing there is you're engaging members on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that face-to-face -face is some of the most important things that you can do. Look somebody in the eye and say, I need you. Yeah. You have well, a place here. And, and some of those got up to the front of the room and made a snide comment about, <laughs> Bianca she picked me to read this one because I'm the oldest in the club and it's about aging you know whatever I mean they made fun of it a little bit and and but I I printed it and I made the font as big as I could on one page so that it was just easy for them to here's your thing I mean I made it's less than a page I just made it easy for them and and got everybody involved and that was because I attended events like this and heard from that and heard what people said and took it to heart. Yep. hundred percent. And I'm going to move fast. Cause we've got what, like two minutes, Eric. Yeah, we've got, uh, yeah. Two minutes. Ben, did you want to share anything? Uh, well, kind of like Bianca, we have a number of uh, members on our, on our rosters, uh, but we have about 40 to 50 to show up every week. So we actually have a really good group and a healthy mix of kind of what we've already been talking about as far as those who, you know, the check writers and the, the people who are always at every activity. And then those who are willing to show up, I think if you give them an assignment, you kind of talked about that already. You, you give them an assignment and you, or you invite them to participate in a certain capacity, they're willing to help out. So, I mean, I'm learning a lot from the things that we can do to try and engage that. I think the one thing that we, um, uh, struggle with is we have, you know, regular new members coming or in, in gaining new members, but the number stays the same as far as who's coming on a regular basis. So I think catching those new members early on, getting them involved in committees, getting them and getting them some sort of assignment or responsibility that helps them feel engaged and involved in the club um, and then help them kind of catch and keep that fire that I think Eric kind of alluded to as far as, you know, kind of falling out of love with the rotary or kind of uh, losing that spark. And so I think just kind of catching them early on um, and getting them involved in a different way as opposed to just showing up every week for, for lunch or for dinner or whatever it is that you do for your, your club meeting. Absolutely. I encourage you all to reach out to Carlsbad because they are one of the, our more vibrant clubs in the district. So pick pick Ben's mind. What, what are they doing that works for them? Because they, they, they've got it figured out. Everybody can get better. Good is the enemy of great. But you know, don't be afraid to ask around and say, hey, what, what are you doing that we could borrow that might work for my club? Here's the issue I'm having. And don't, don't be afraid to, to communicate. And 
Arvis, anything you'd like to share? I'm relatively new, so I'm here and I'm listening a lot. But however, I'm new to my club, less than a year, and I'm president-elect already for 2025, as well as the treasurer right now, and also the community service chair. Um, like many of you, we have a an aging membership. I appreciate them, I always say, because they have the historical data. But I am the, like, whether well, I'm 65 coming in and they're much older than I am, you know. And so I try to appreciate them from that standpoint. However, um, I have to sit at the meetings and, and just listen to them talk to find out what's happening within the club and things like that. So I'm very, I'm a very structured person. And so I would have liked a membership orientation, you know, and said, this is what your role is supposed to be. This is what we do. This is what we historically have done. These are the different fundraisers we do or community service projects and things like that. So um, I'm desiring in that area and I'll find out, I know, but I just have to wait and listen. So each time I go to a meeting, I say, oh, didn't know that. Oh, didn't know that. You know, and so I take my little notes and learn from there. But I'm learning a lot from what you all are telling me here right now. And the website is very good. And as one member said, just go read the website. And I'm like, I just don't want to go read the website. I want people to talk to me, you know. But other than that, I mean, the group is a very good group. I like them a lot. And I'm having a good time there. And I plan to stay. So we'll see. Cool. Thank you all awesome. for a great conversation. Sorry, we have to jump to the next room. Um, but please look for the recording so you can see. And thank you all for a great discussion.